In the Liverpool City region, we are ambitious in our fight against climate change with the aim of going net zero by 2040, 10 years ahead of the national target. Pinet is a low carbon initiative which uses hydrogen to power things and the impact of this is that by 2030 it will be capable of removing up to 10 million tonnes of carbon from the atmosphere across the northwest of England and north east Wales each year. Um, it's, a, it's obviously a huge investment, it will cost £72 million to introduce um, and we can already begin to see the impact and the benefits of it now as a little bit closer to home where I live in St Helens which is part of the uh, Liverpool city region uh, a lot of the buses on the 10A bus route are powered by hydrogen already uh, and, it show, and it is shown to have a great impact as over 82% of all public transport journeys are by buses within the region so obviously there's a lot of scope there to have hydrogen powered buses also in St Helens there is a, a glass manufacturing company known as Pilkingtons um, and they are introducing a scheme known as Glass Futures which it stipulates that um, glass is going to be made by hydrogen and obviously it's a big step towards achieving net zero um, and obviously it is also quite significant as it's the first large scale demonstration of 100% hydrogen firing in glass production anywhere in the world. And also with regards to transport, there are, um, the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority has pledged to introduce 600 kilometres of active travel um, networks in the next 10 years around the Liverpool City Region um, and obviously it will cost 8.3 million um, but it will have huge benefits in terms of reducing um, the emission of greenhouse gases and also we will introduce battery powered trains or we are hoping to and also tram train technology and trackless trains are also being investigated to see if they will be suitable for the region or not and then finally with regards to tidal power the river Mersey is significant in the fact that apart from the seven it has the highest tidal energy range in the uk and obviously the geography of the river Mersey means that the city region is one of the only places in the uk with the ability to generate green tidal electricity so obviously it makes it a great um idea to obviously introduce um and obviously there are also be other benefits to this such as it is that, um going to create new jobs and it's also not weather dependent so it's predictable and reliable and it also has the potential to power up to a million homes potentially um, and we are currently at the stage where financial, technical and environmental evaluations are currently being made. So with regards to high net transport and tidal power there is a lot of progress in the city region uh, with regards to infrastructure and climate change. Thank you. We all know that climate change is a global issue but that doesn't mean that we have to look at the other side of the world to see its impacts. Right here in the northwest, extreme weather events are happening with increasing severity and intensity. Um, and for us, uh, flooding is a major concern uh, due to heavy rainfall in our region, while things like um, wildfires are even predicted to happen more and more over the next decade, which is really concerning. Air pollution is another, is another concern of ours. Uh, due to traffic congestion in our region and unfortunately it's people from low SE socio-economic backgrounds that are dis disproportionately impacted by this even though they contribute the least. That's why young people in our region are really engaged and passionate about fighting climate change head-on whether that's through schools so a lot of schools in our region have uh, eco committees where young people are able to be involved in decisions to make the school greener whether that's through our group Youth Impact or through projects like uh, UNICEF Child Friendly Cities Programme where young people from across the region have the chance to make their concerns heard and to try and come up with solutions. We've seen a massive turnout from young people over the last couple of years in uh, youth climate strikes um, and we know that other, uh, young people in other areas are just as passionate as we are because in our collaborative Youth Command Authority meetings the environment one of the topics that's most frequently discussed. So I'd just like to highlight that there's a massive demand there for young people to have their voices heard, to be involved in the decision making and policy making processes, and that needs to be harnessed. Climate change is a huge issue for everybody, but our generation is going to experience more impacts than the current generation of decision makers. Youth involvement is key in any decisions involving climate change, and the young M5 can work with mayors to ensure this is possible. Climate change affects young people in so many different ways. I think it's interdisciplinary to the issues it solves. For example, 
it's not just about reducing carbon emissions, but by doing so, you get to solve financial inequality in public transport fares, or most notably for me, you get to improve the political participation from young people, provided that doesn't make us all actually willing to listen and act upon what young people have to say and uh, that they treat us as the present and not just only as the future. I think broadly speaking, climate change is one of the only issues where policymakers are willing to involve young people in their tables of discussions and processes, broadly speaking. But I don't think climate change will be solved until we tackle all the other constituent areas that are damaging our planet. One of the great things adopted in South Yorkshire is the Zoom Beyond Travel Pass, which gives 18 to 21 year olds concessionary travel fares of 80 pence, the same as under 18s. It improves the living costs for young people in South Yorkshire and it promotes the use of public transport. And on top of that, it was first influenced and helped shaped by the South Yorkshire Mayoral Youth Combined Authority. So just from picking up that example, it shows the whole holistical picture of climate action. And notice how, because notice how the chain of reaction started from young people. Um, that itself, I think, manifests the whole need to work collaboratively with young people across regions. I think we're connected passionately, but in terms of connecting us physically, one idea uh, which we could introduce as the Young Five is a trans-regional travel pass, where young people can travel from region to region on public transport efficiently and feasibly. Um, I think that well, that's one idea, but I hope that each devolved region will be able to set up their own youth combined authority first, if they haven't already, so that we can become the youth M10, and so that the nation can really value the need for young young scrutiny um, and influence, much like how Dan Jarvis has through his time in mayoral office. I'd like to sort of tell you a little bit about a bit of like a climate win that we had in, in, in South Yorkshire. Uh, and I think the, the, the biggest one that I could talk about is the creation and delivery of the Zoom Beyond Pass uh, in South Yorkshire. So I'll tell you a little bit, I'll, I'll sort of set the scene a bit and then tell you a little bit about what that is. So in South Yorkshire, we have concessionary fares for young people. So before the Zoom Beyond Pass, uh, we had the uh, Mega Travel Pass, which was for those aged 11 to 16. Uh, so that's sort of lower, lower secondary school, so year seven, all the way until uh, year 11. And then up as so a sixth form uh, with the 16 to 18 pass uh, for those in sixth form. Um, now you can get ATP fares on buses and trams within, uh, within, within the South Yorkshire region with these, with these concessionary passes. Uh, but we sort of we talked to Dan uh, as a group and we said, look, there is a sort of a, a group of, of people who are sort of aged around 18 to 21, those who are still in full time education, who cannot access concessionary fares. So you can get a, a, a student ticket, uh, which I believe is a one pound single fare, uh, if you're with an accredited university and you have your student card. Um, but for those who are sort of doing things like apprenticeships, wherein you don't get recognised as a student, uh, on, on public transport and by those providers, uh, it's difficult for them to get a concession at all, despite the fact that they're not in full-time work. So we sort of had a bit of a discussion. It wasn't us sort of telling uh, Dan and his team, we need to do this. It was, more of a, uh, it was more of a case of us having a really good discussion together about what, what we could do about this problem. Um, and that led to the idea of a Zoom Beyond Pass which uh, is a bit of a fancy name for increasing the concessionary fare passes all the way to 21. So you've got, you've got a, a 10 year uh, range there for the ATP fare all the way from 11 to 21 to help those in full-time education get all the way, uh, hopefully to at least part, partway through their, their degree or their apprenticeship, uh, he helping them to sort of uh, access public transport more. And as we all know, public transport is great for the environment. It's a good way to keep cars off the road, especially for young people, which is one of the demographics that use public transport the most. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what we did. And Dan uh, and his team with, uh, I believe it was about £870 million pounds, uh, funding from central government for a, a COVID renewal fund for South Yorkshire. Uh, he managed to use some of that money uh, to trial this pass for about for a year. Um, so we're really excited. Uh, it's been a, it's been a massive success so far. I've had friends of mine come up to me and say, "Jude, this is awesome. I know you're sort of involved uh, with with sort of like this regional stuff. How did that happen?" And I managed to sort of tell a lot of my friends about this, and I think a lot more of my friends, especially that age between 18 and 21, are using public transport. That's a massive, massive climate win. Uh, in terms of uh, what I want from the rest of the M5, I want to hear your stories like that. I want to see what's worked. 
I also want to hear about where you believe young people should have been included more. Uh, I think that would be something really interesting to speak about and we can take each other's ideas on that. But I'd also like to hear about how your area is impacted by climate change. I think that's something we don't talk about enough. Obviously the global south is disproportionately affected when it comes to the climate crisis, but the global north is facing issues. In South Yorkshire, we're one of the worst counties in the UK for floods. We get flooded on sort of nearly a yearly basis now, uh, and they, you know, they, they cost livelihoods, they cost business, but they cost lives as well. Uh, and that's a really scary thing, and not enough has been done to mitigate those effects because we don't see enough investment, we don't see enough uh, sort of planning uh, for, for future cases of, the, of these floods. Um, so I want to know how, how is the climate crisis impacting your local metropolitan area? I think that'll be really useful. I think taking all these things into consideration, we can sort of see you know, what's good, what's bad, what could have been done better and what do we need to do now and we can sort of create a locally minded but nationally focused approach so that we can sort of come together as local areas as metropolitan areas and be able to apply the knowledge that we all have from our different corners of the UK uh, and really sort of push that out uh, for a national response um, that really highlights just how important and necessary local knowledge and action is. So yeah, I'm really excited to be a part of the, the Youth M5. Uh, so amazing, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say. In my region of Yorkshire, there have been many reports launched by particularly think tanks, but also other institutions um, on ways that as a region, we can reduce the impact of climate change. Um, and there has also been a report launched by the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, which out outlines potential policies for how, as a region, we can reduce the impact of climate change on millions of people who live in Yorkshire, such as a Green New Deal, um, green skills being developed for, for particularly young people. So we can have a greener economy, a greener local economy in Yorkshire in the future, which will help protect against the terrible impact of climate change um, but I think also in regards, in regards to other things there have been many flood barriers and things such as that implemented in Yorkshire to reduce the impacts of climate change but I think there needs to be more done to stop the future impacts of climate change rather than just, rather than just having ways to stop what we have already but we need to launch new initiatives to stop what may come that hasn't come yet, rather than just stopping what is already here. Young people are finding it uncertain, they don't know what the future holds, and they don't know how climate change will affect them. Climate change is a constant source of worry for millions of young people around the world, and Yorkshire is no exception to that. Climate change also affects young people in Yorkshire in many other ways, such as floods as Yorkshire suffers in particular from floods and this is one of the major impacts of climate change in the region. This means that young people often, when their neighbourhood floods, particularly in areas such as small towns in West Yorkshire and the Yorkshire Dales, have to travel often up to an hour to other schools which can provide them with a proper education until their school can be used again as a result of floods. And this can not only cause anxiety amongst young people, but also um, reduce their sense of stableness, which can then also affect their learning. And I also think disruption is a, ma is a major effect of climate change in the region, as delayed journeys, in particular when getting to schools, as a result of snow and often rain, they also cause problems in the region. What can the main do to improve I think that we can work together on climate change as the M10 by particularly sharing ideas on climate change and on how in our retrospective regions we can reduce the impact of this 